Hello there, my fellow corpse thieves, and welcome back to some Warhammer Fantasy lore. Today's topic is gonna be a bit of a standalone thing, although it definitely belongs in the same wider category of Warhammer magic. Although we did talk extensively in the past about vampires and even Nagash himself, I never actually made a video detailing the forbidden art of necromancy. Since we did talk about dark magic overall already, I figured this was a good follow-up. That being said, I'm your host, the Grimdark Necromancer for today, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? Practiced by vampires and, wait for it, necromancers, necromancy is the magic of the world of the dead and the undead. With this, a person has the ability to communicate with the dead and summon spirits, extend their life cycle for centuries beyond all natural and logical order, and resurrect corpses with which to create an army of the undead to fight in your name. There are times when the less educated will confuse necromancy with the magic of the Amethyst College, since it is closely related to the Amethyst or Shaish magic. After all, they both have a certain similarity, since they are both magics whose nature is related to death and the dead themselves. However, both magics deal with this aspect in a very different way. For those practicing amethyst magic, they are very clear about a universal rule, which says that, no matter how durable or long-lived a person or thing may be, in the end its life will come to an end and it has to die. Necromancy, for its part, is pretty much the reverse. It is a corrupted version of Shaish, opposing the main rule since the objective of dark magic is to enslave the spirits of the deceased, resurrect the dead, and above all else, learn to dominate death itself. Those who practice this most terrible of the forbidden arts can face a lot of dangers. Some try to extend their lives for decades or even centuries beyond their natural length. Sometimes they are successful and these people retain their physical body and what little sanity remains, but as a general rule, the results are often far more terrible than death itself. Continued use of black magic empties the soul and deforms the body, and as time passes, a necromancer becomes more and more ghastly in appearance. There are very, very few organized necromancers in the world. Most of them are solitary spellcasters who barely ever talk to other people, and learn their magic primarily from derivative works or incomplete copies of the Nine Books of Nagash or the Liber Mortis. Some do take apprentices, although that is a rare practice. Anyone undertaking the troublesome task of finding a necromancer to enter his service will most likely end his days as a zombie instead. Despite a very sinister reputation, not all who practice necromancy start out as evil men. Some begin their studies for noble reasons, such as saving the life of a loved one, while others are simply scholars who want to expand their knowledge. But for one reason or another, necromantic magic eventually ends up corrupting all it touches, and a constant dealing with the undead and the fear of persecution will soon drive even the most tenacious of minds into paranoia and despair. To ward off the deadly effects of black magic, necromancers channel their energy through dead creatures or into their spirits. Without this protection, a necromancer will slowly wither into a wraith. Their keen intellect will erode, their bodies will be reduced to little more than a stinking corpse which can still walk, and their sanity is lost in a sea of horror as they will comprehend the world of the dead. Necromancers are universally hated. The humans of the old world, for the most part, respect the dead and the priest of Moor and Witch Hunters perpetually search for those who want to disturb the rest of the deceased. For his part, a vampire can unleash the full power of black magic without risk of harming himself, and also has an intrinsic control of the undead that a human necromancer can never equal. Only a few vampires can learn new magic, most of them use their necromancer minions to attend to daily summoning or binding rituals. Many of the duties of a necromancer working for a vampire are much less glorious and arcane than one might imagine. They are mainly responsible for digging up corpses and fix the bodies of broken zombies and skeletons with wood, metal and nails so they can be reanimated. 
the dark art of necromancy has a very long history, tracing all the way back to the High Elves of Ulfuan. Although those elves knew the power of Dar, dark magic in its purest form, they turned their backs on it and dedicated themselves to studying the winds of magic, since they seemed a lot safer. But there were eventually those who gave way to the temptation, the first of the dark elves. However, this depraved race would not be the creator of necromancy as we know it today, as that would come from the hands of a man from the mightiest kingdom of a time long past the realm of Nehekara. The origins of necromancy are surrounded in dark legend and rumor. It is said in Abdul ben Rashid's Book of the Dead that far to the south of the Badlands, beyond the deserts of eastern Araby, lies the land of the dead. The glorious civilization of Nehekara once arose in this cursed land, but today it is nothing more than a ghastly realm populated entirely by the undead. Some 2,000 years before the coming of Sigmar, roughly 4,500 years before modern times, air tags, Nagash was born in Khemri, the greatest city on the Great River. As the firstborn of one King Ketep, and according to the tradition of ancient Nehekara, he was destined to serve the mortuary cult, while his younger brother, Tutep, ascended the throne after the death of their father. Obsessed with death even at a young age, even more so than the rest of his people, Nagash was an exceptionally gifted student, and due to his talents and heritage, he became one of the most popular high priests of Khemri. However, thirsty for power and envying his brother's position, Nagash would surround himself with faithful acolytes, as depraved and power-hungry as he was. In a bloody coup, he would seize control of Khemri and bury his brother alive in the great pyramid his father had built. In the early days of Nagash's reign in Khemri, it was a cabal of dark elf warlocks that had been shipwrecked on the shores of Nehekara. Three of these survivors were captured and brought before Nagash as slaves. Nagash would torture these pale-skinned intruders for years until they finally agreed to share with him the secrets of mystical power. In just a few years afterwards, he would already overcome the powers of his tutors, and he would even destroy them in a magical duel while they tried to run away. Nagash would conduct unspeakable experiments in his quest for immortality, and before long, the inhabitants of his city shunned him. He was reborn as a brilliant sorcerer, and his experiments eventually ended up with the rise of necromancy itself. The now called Great Necromancer would compile all his discoveries into nine volumes of cursed lore, the infamous Books of Nagash, the most powerful source of necromantic magic which has ever existed in the world. Another source of necromantic lore is the Liber Mortis of the infamous necromancer Van Hal. This guy rose to power during the Black Plague of 1111 IC. In this lengthy and somewhat confusing volume, Van Hal recounts what he discovered in the Nine Books of Nagash, and describes his own travels in the Land of the Dead. It is said that in year 12 of the Imperial Calendar, Nagash and a huge horde of the undead were defeated by Sigmar himself at the Battle of the River Reich. However, this battle is barely documented in Imperial history. It is not clear whether this is because the current authorities are guilty of covering up one of their less glorious wars, or because of excessive exaggeration on the part of Van Hall. What is certain is that Van Hall actually traveled through the territory south of the Badlands, though discovering how much of his writing is real and how much of fever dream remains a mystery. Of the few who dare travel to the south to verify the account, none have returned. More modern black magic practitioners use a form of necromancy shaped by other students over the centuries. The works of Van Hall and Cadden, among others, have supplemented the partial translations of Nagash's own writings that still survive. The work of these necromancers may be flawed, missing some paragraphs here and there, or contain traps set by the author to catch the unwary. The complete copy of Van Hall's Liber Mortis is safely guarded by the Sigmarites, and said to be capable of devouring a reader's soul should he even touch it. However, the original form of necromancy, invented by Nagash, still endures. This has been preserved by the vampires, especially those of the Necrarch bloodline, 
and then passed down from master to apprentice, generation after generation, along with their own history. Mystery has always surrounded the study of necromancy. To learn this forbidden knowledge properly, an aspirant must find a necromancer or a vampire and become his or her apprentice, or obtain one of the forbidden tomes such as the Liber Mortis or one of the nine books of Nagash, or at least a copy, obviously. It is this knowledge of intrinsic mystery that causes most necromancers to become servants of the vampire counts, hoping to learn firsthand from the masters of undeath themselves. Obviously, finding such a tutor is difficult to say the least. Necromancers avoid the company of the living lest they be discovered, and vampires are notoriously domineering and reluctant to let their minions learn anything about them. Also, given his morbid reputation and unstable mental health, there's no guarantee that even if you find one, he'll actually teach you anything. Many wannabe necromancers ended up in far more menial tasks or end their days serving their mentors in eternal hell or animated corpses, or as an ingredient in a particularly difficult spell, or, in the case of vampires, as a light snack. Because of that, it may seem to be a bit safer to just try to find one of the banned books. The arcane knowledge of necromancy is found in these grimoires, written in ink distilled from human blood and bound in the skin of living creatures. Many spells can be found in these books to animate the dead, to call upon the dark power of magic, and control lesser creatures of the undead. In them you can also find rites that concentrate dark magic, lists of the days when that power is strongest, and places where dark magic is concentrated. Only those with the strongest willpower can even read these volumes and keep their sanity. They tell horrible secrets of the afterlife and the sinister nightmares of the dead in their eternal rest. Nevertheless, the search for books of forbidden lore still carries its own dangers. Many of them are copies of ancient texts long forgotten, with errors which have accumulated in successive copying processes. Therefore, there is absolutely no guarantee that the rituals they contain will be transcribed correctly. Some will simply not work, while others can go disastrously wrong. Like that one time, the infamous Jacques de Noirot accidentally animated all the corpses in the cemeteries of Musilon, and then realized he can't control them. Imbued as part of the magic with an insatiable desire for human flesh, the zombies then devoured their unfortunate necromancer and stormed the streets of that city. After feeding on hundreds of peasants, artisans, merchants and soldiers, they would be eventually destroyed by an army of the King of Bretonia. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the practice of necromancy in the world of Warhammer Fantasy for today. Definitely not something you should be doing unless you want to move away from civilization and become an illegal hermit. And that's the best case scenario. Of course, that didn't stop the likes of Heinrich Kemmler to come into existence, so maybe the advantages are worth it. Who knows? As always, I look forward to reading your thoughts on this type of magic and its practitioners in the comments below. Do you think necromancers are cool? Or would you rather go legal with the colleges of magic? If you found the episode informative or entertaining, do leave a like, share and subscribe for future content. Thanks a lot for watching, and Sigmar's blessings be upon you.